In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make efficient traffic in Transport Fever 2 and how deleting routes might actually be more efficient. And it might look like a great city that's growing to you, but there's actually several problems with this city that's limiting its growth. A big one of those is that it's not planned very well and the traffic's going to build up pretty quickly. We can already see this happening just over here. There's a massive traffic jam over here, an even bigger one. We're going to be fixing all of this today because we're just wasting money and we don't need to waste money in a war because we have to fight. But today is not a time for fighting because in the previous video when we took over Paris, I asked you guys, should we defend Paris using what soldiers we currently have or should we fuel population in Berlin to get more soldiers for the war? So jumping straight into it, all the trains from the previous battle are now in the depot. We got some in this depot over here and I believe some in this depot over here as well. So it looks like we got three Prouse, a few wagons, one PLM and we got one, two, three, four of the S1 KPEVs. Interesting. So I think we need to do some changing around because a lot of this infrastructure is very old, especially this yard, which is currently pretty much full capacity. There's very little space in here for any spare wagons. You've got that there, you've got that there. That's about it. Like there's really not a lot of room in here. So I had a look around and I'm thinking, what if here was a little split off and then this became the goods yard and we saw our trains in this yard instead? Wouldn't that be a better idea? So I think we're going to do that. And after that, I'm going to show you the best ways to do traffic in Transport Fever 2. But first, I'm going to put a yard in in 3, 2, 1. And boom, it's done. Everything is now organized very, very neatly. And there's lots of space left over for future expansion. Absolutely fantastic. I even segregated passenger and cargo. How good's that? Now the only thing about this is we're going to need a train to shunt things around. As with the other setup, there was tracks that go around the back so you could unhook and hook up to just certain bits. Can't do that with this one so you need a shunting train, but that's fine because we've got plenty of trains. Most of which are getting a little bit old, so let's see what we've got here. We have the, uh, the Prius 53, that's looking like the oldest train we currently own. And it's not particularly good power wise, even though it is pretty cheap, so I don't expect a whole lot of it. The next best thing is the BR89 Prius and that is like more expensive for the same thing basically so yeah we'll go for one of these guys stick one of these class 53 Priuses onto here amazing train is now in the yard look at that though the original yard so much cleaner than before much better much better and what I did here is I added an extra track so the main line isn't interfered with if trains are shunting stuff up and down they're not having to go onto the actual main line they have their own sort of dedicated track to come off and onto and that just makes life so much easier and I recommend that in your saves for your traffic if you're having stuff going off the main line have a separate track that it goes onto first and it saves a lot of traffic and speaking of traffic well we've got to talk road traffic now one-way roads aren't unlocked yet which is an issue because they are really useful in the later game but we can do similar things in the run up to one-way roads being unlocked and it's pretty simple stuff like for example if we have an intersection let's say this one here now currently there is two lanes that go here. So if I want to go forward or right, I'm in this lane. If I want to go forward, right or left, I'm in this lane. And on this one again, if I want to go forward or left, I'm in this lane. So okay, this is how traffic builds up. You don't want to do this. You want to make sure that there's dedicated turning lanes. Let's start with this one, for example. This one's a bit tricky because there's three ways it's going instead of the two. But if we go to road, this has two lanes. This has two lanes, but this has four lanes. So we can go to the upgrade tool, hold shift, and click on the end there. Now there's an extra lane, so if I want to turn right, I go into this outside lane, and if I want to turn left, I stay in this inside lane. Same thing can be said on these guys. Upgrade that one, upgrade that one, and now, when I come up to here, even though we do have one road extra on one side of the road we don't need technically, this is now much better because you can stay in the middle lane if you want to turn left, or use the outside lane to continue forward. So much better, so much better and it avoids so much traffic. So first of all I'm going to do back to all the roads and then we'll come back to this in a little bit and see how it performs. So this is a pretty bad example, you don't want to be doing this, lots of intersections near each other. But the thing is I need it here for now because there's a lot of routes using these roads, a lot of routes and we need it just for the time being. But this is something when traffic builds up in the future with better cars, more cars, this is something I'll change over. Might even put a, a fast road through here like a, a motorway or, a, or autobahn as they're called in Germany. So I'm going to go up here to the top left and I'm going to select the traffic option. And now this unlocks most of the map's traffic. It's pretty good. There's a few little issues over here, but they should fix themselves because I've added these new lanes. What I'm more worried about is Berlin itself. Because if there's a little issue now, imagine when the cars start being invented and everyone's getting them. That's going to be a major issue then. So I'm seeing there's a little bit of traffic here. Now what's going on here is probably these railway crossings is causing that. Now I'd re usually recommend against doing what I'm about to do, but I'm going to make the road wider. And that is literally because the, it's the only option. There is no other option aside from building a bridge over the top. 
we'll fix the tracks in a sec. But you can see this is a major road right here, so I'm going to try and upgrade as much as I can. I think that's as good as we're going to get, so I'm going to fix this track, of course. Save money on tracks here. I've not built a track into both sides of the track like that, because there's no point when you can click here and press double slip switch. Never do this when it's like out in the wilderness, say over here. That's a terrible idea because it will grind your trains to a halt. But see as though these trains are just leaving the station, they're only going to be at slow speeds anyway. And it does work in this instance, but only in this instance, okay? And I think now if you press begin, we can see everything should be running perfectly smoothly, at least with the trains. Now let's check out the traffic because there's a holy traffic jam. It's uh, one way to describe it. There's a lot of cars, a lot of cars, and uh, that's obviously not good. So let's see first of all what these guys are transporting, because uh, I have noticed an opportunity. Of course, this road parallels a railway line, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, considering that we might as well just use trains. Let's find out what these guys are transporting. It's going to be stone. Are you also stone? Are these all stone? It looks like it. So, oh, what are you? You're not stone, you're wood. So stone and wood, very, very easy. All we've got to do is change the routes up. So instead of going from all the way at the raw resource by truck over to the distribution hub in Berlin, I'm actually going to change it up a little bit so a train comes in instead and the train's going to pick the resources up probably around here somewhere um, and we'll have the trucks ship it in from over here to the train station. Now if you can avoid putting train stations next to the industries, you're much better off placing the train station just outside away from industries and shipping stuff in because it means you can reuse it later on, it's much more efficient. So let's do that right now, it's super simple. We'll grab a cargo station, a nice small one should do. So we'll place that down just there, it's obviously not perfect but it'll do. Now this track's going to hook across there just like before, plug into there. Obviously not ideal because there's going to be fast trains coming through here as well but it's going to work I think like for the most part so that's okay. Okay, we'll reconstruct this road as well. Probably put a nice curve on that and we'll bring that around the border here. And this little guy is going to cross the train tracks and plug back into the Vienna grid. That looks pretty good to me. Let's hook it up to the cargo network. Excellent. Let's hook back in the Budapest connections into this road. Let's set up these routes now. So we've got a route coming from the wood place. Let's change that real quick. So instead of going to the Berlin drop off, we're going to get rid of that. We'll go from Budapest Annex bring it down here to Budapest, I'm going to call this Budapest Station, but it's Budapest Transfer, make it multi-platform. We can probably like more than half most of these vehicles, I mean, how many have we got on here? 75, and how many's here? Like 5, 10, 15, so maybe just drop this like 50 or something crazy. Got to do the same thing with the stone, so get rid of Berlin, add that station, multi-platform. Okay, great, now that's dropping off, so okay, all the stuff's getting shipped to the cargo station. But now, when it gets taken by train, which we've yet to set up, it's going to get dropped off in this hub. Where does it go then? So it's going to drop the stone off, which is not an issue. That's going to go straight into the construction materials plant. But I don't think the wood is covered, so that's an easy fix. All we've got to do is make a new line that's going to go from there over to here. And that is going to be an alternate platform. And this one needs to be preferably a more empty platform. So I'm going to make it platform three and also do an alternate just in case. Make it full and change it to 30 seconds. It's going to be stone to brick three because it's the third leg of the journey and we'll add the second leg in just a sec. And of course, because we just sent some vehicles to the depot, we can now use those same vehicles to pick the stuff up and put it on the new route. Okay, and that's going to be called wood to saw one. Because we're going raw to the planks, that's fine. We'll add some vehicles to the line as well. Give it a nice wood color. There we go, that's a nice woody color. Out you come buddies, get to work, get to work. Okay, and the last thing to do is add a train. It's relatively easy, so we'll go find our depot. Got a few trains to choose from. We've got quite a few of the S1 KPEVs. Got one, two, three, four of those and one PLM. I think we also have some of the slower guys as well, which aren't ideal really. So it looks like we've got two of the slower guys as well, which isn't particularly ideal. I would quite like something a little bit faster. So perhaps we'll go for a PLM. I think there's one chilling in here anyway. In fact, there's a lot of, there's a lot of war stock in here. We've got a lot of KPEVs. Okay, so I said should we prioritise population, and 81% of you said that, so I think that's a kind of a strong indication we should use the best stuff. <laughs> so I think we'll go for one of these guys, modify, and we'll take these guys off and put some of the new carriages, I think. So the S1 goes 90 kilometers an hour. Yeah, so we'll go for a, a nice gondola. We're going 80, which is not ideal, but anyway, one, two, three, I think, maybe four, yeah, four sounds about right. And we're also carrying what? We're carrying wood, right? So we need some of these guys anyway, that's fine. So we'll get another flat car to make eight cars total. I think modify that and then stick it onto a new line. That's going to go from the pickup point just here. And it's going to drop off over at the distribution, sorting yard, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be 
uh, wood to saw number one. Give it a nice woody color. All right, and here it is. A magnificent train is just about leaving the yard, taking a very slow pace, but it's starting to pull out now a little bit faster. That's very, very nice. Awesome. On it goes onto the main line. Not too many trains around today, interestingly. Speaking of passenger trains, let's have a look at Berlin. I saw there was quite an issue with passenger numbers. For uh, Budapest, they want 187 passengers. Okay, that's interesting. So let's see if Budapest wants the same. So here's Budapest, and you've got currently 298 passengers. Wowza! Okay, well, I think this guy's due for an upgrade then. He's actually just pulling to Berlin as it happens. So I think once he's dropped his passengers off, we're going to replace this guy. We'll send him to the depot and we'll get probably one of the new guys, I think, that goes nice and fast. Maybe even two. Wow. Let's see. Current capacity 60. So while that's going over there, let's see what we got in the depot. I think we'll probably go for a S1 here as well. So manage vehicle and we'll see what we get here. So passengers, you're currently going what speed? So we've got... Okay, so you've gone 100, which is not ideal considering I think the top speed is 90. Slightly faster. We could go with one that goes 90 would be best. That one's quite good at 80. I like that. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. Yeah, so it's all looking pretty, pretty fast. So we just want one that goes at 90. Don't particularly need that much capacity as well, so we've got to kind of balance it a little bit. I think 48, if we perhaps go up to 80 with it, with a faster train, could be a good idea perhaps. If there's another one that goes 80 as well, maybe it's smaller I could stick it on the end, but it's not looking like there is. You're going 80? Ah, okay, so what if I stick this guy on the end? That's how many? 130 capacity, that's double. Okay, so what if we get rid of that guy and instead put that on there? 120, okay, it's getting better. Not quite there yet. So what if we get rid of maybe, I think maybe if we just don't modify that at all, stick it straight on the line, that could be pretty good. So we do a little swap over now. This guy's going back to the depot. He's just backing up into there. So hopefully we're making some good money soon. Let's have a look here. So we're bringing these guys, how much are you having on board? 32, that's not great. Not, not massive numbers. Uh, 235 and 92. It's an easy fix. We'll send him back to the depot and grab some more, but that's a lot. All right, now this is a little bit longer, so hopefully this should do the job a little bit better. I'm not sure how we're doing on power though. So we're still on mediocre power with this and it's significantly longer, this train. So here's hoping that it actually does a decent job. Um, might have to upgrade this little guy because he's only a small little fella when you compare it to the rest of the train. And just picture this, uh, once we've got our train hierarchy set up, we're going to have trains like this, except this is only two types of cargo. We're going to be running every type of cargo on one train. Another thing that helps traffic, few signals. Pop them down every now and again. Especially in the early game, they can be quite close together and there's no issue. Just make sure your longest train is actually the correct length because if not, well, you're going to be in trouble because they're going to cross over the block sections. It's going to cause a few issues. So just make sure your signals are the correct distance apart when you're upgrading your trains. And now we can see that our cargo train is full up to the top with resources. And there's plenty left over at the cargo station. So what I might do is add an extra train. But before that, let's think about what we should actually do with these resources. Because we've got a lot of stone and we've got a lot of wood that's going towards the capital. But there's kind of not a whole lot of purpose for it. Now, we obviously need to fix that, otherwise we're not going as much population as we could, which is not ideal, obviously. So let's do that now. Now, previously we've already set up goods, food, tools, and construction materials, which is actually four of the six resources that the citizens require. And the other two that we haven't unlocked is gonna be machines and fuel. And that's a very easy fix, because if you think about it, machines only need wood and steel to be produced. And look what's happening here. We've got a steel works with plenty of steel left over, and we've also got a sawmill with plenty of wood coming in on the train. Okay, let's do it. I think the most logical place has got to be around here in our hub area. So I think if we grab a machines factory and let's find a good place for it. So I like this as a spot, it's pretty good. So let's just add a little exit lane here. We'll just pop that in just around here. Can we get it nice and flat? Hang on. So this is how you make a slip lane. You add two little things like that and then you can loop around like that. Or you can do two turns on either side, just like this. Then you can connect the two. I would recommend using a straight though, and now you can place down your industry. If the road gets in the way, feel free to delete this. You can always replace it after. Why do we add slip lanes like this? Well, it's because basically we don't want things to ever be on the main road. This is the main road. It's going to get busier than it currently is at some point, so we need to prepare for that. And this is why we do this. Add a little drop-off point underneath buildings. We'll just pop that just around here. So what is possible if you change this to face the other direction like that, you can actually add the route to stop here as a point. So I'd advise against doing this because over a lot of different industries, a lot of stops, 
basically the first one's going to steal all of the goods and the second one or third one or fourth one is going to run a little bit drier. The more you have obviously the least resources get into the end industry. So I wouldn't recommend doing this but because there's only this one and this tools factory over here it's only two and it's not that big of a deal so I think we'll go for it. So now these refined wood are going to get dropped off at this here. We can go back and replace one of these on the other side now and we can grab some stuff from this pickup point over here. Except this one's going to be a new line from there. All platforms. Probably going to use the least used platform, which can be platform 3, with alternate platforms. And then add this to the other side of the platform, make it that one. So adding some vehicles to this will mean that they'll go pick the stuff up and they'll drop it off at this producing point. And we'll just call that one Steel to Mash 1. We'll give it a nice colour. Got a lot more bricks coming in. By the looks of it, we've also got a lot more tools coming in, so we might have to add some more vehicles in a minute as well. But for now, let's crack on with this. So these planks are now getting dropped off, these refined wood. So what if we ask for some demand for these machines? What if we create a pickup somewhere around here? Maybe if we park it just there. I'm just going to configure that and add a few more platforms, just so we've got the extra availability for storage. All right, and plug her in, just in case we need it, just in case there's a stuff packing up, we don't want to waste it. We can hook this up now to the road distribution hub, which is going to be over here. And if you've never seen one of these before, basically everything gets shipped just outside the capital city. Then trucks will carry all of the types of cargo into the drop-off points within the city, and it fuels it nicely. There's not a whole load of vehicles and a convoy going around the city all the time. There's just one here and there. Okay, that's now done. We'll add the alternate stops to these, of course. And we'll grab some vehicles. Luckily, we've got plenty of vehicles from the war effort because obviously there's a lot of things being used for battle. So we've got 114 vehicles to choose from. Uh, you can carry steel and planks. That's excellent. So we'll do that. We'll grab a few of these, probably just the four. Actually, change my mind. We'll put three on there and that's going to be steel to machines one. Dump it on. Those guys should start heading out just about now. There we go. Excellent. And I'll give them a nice color as well. You can get out of that army green color and replace it with a nice industry gray all right now we've got to pick up the machines and that's going to go over to the towns so we've already got a line just called machines we're going to go back over here find out what carries machines so you carry everything yes you carry machines so one two three four five of those actually we'll go for eight eight is a good number and we'll stick that on to machines and we'll give these guys a nice industry color away from those military colors they're being reused now very nice these guys are on the way roads running smoothly good news and thank you so much for everyone's comments by the way i really appreciate them and i read them all and i reply to as many as i can so my favorite comment from this last video comes from oscarman 7800 and he says did i just watch transport fever get turned into a real-time strategy game you sure did oscar and i'm glad to see people really excited and enthusiastic about this series so thank you and a special shout out as well to banana gaming 7612 for guessing which comment i'd choose good job there mate and if you guys want a chance of being featured in the next video, make sure to leave a comment. Now let's have a look at public transport. Alright, so by the looks of things, we haven't got much of it. <laughs> uh, that's fine, we can sort that out. So basically the point of the public transport within the city, it means people can get to work and to the shops a lot easier. It just stimulates the economy nice and easy. So for this, we're probably going to need a bus hub, which we kind of have here, but it's not really going to cut it. So we're going to upgrade a little bit and we're going to add a little bus stop somewhere. So I'm thinking perhaps if we delete this, uh, we'll pause the game. We'll get rid of that. We can extend this station out uh, with a passenger station. Uh, we'll have to build it a little bit down here, then that's all right. They can just leave through the uh, the soldiers' entrance. We'll stop. We're going to place one down. Probably here is obviously not the best spot because there's a junction just next to it, but it's better than nothing, I think. So uh, what if I spin this round, actually, then we can do a, a tight corner on the end of there. So we'll just do that, and then we'll see how many platforms we can fit in. Probably the three, I'm guessing. It's not looking like I can get any more in there, no. So if we get three, that's fine. That'll do. Yeah, if we put them like that, and then just kind of slide that in there. So what we'll do is we'll grab a road, we'll bring it to about there, and then put a little corner on it, just like that. And um, we'll bring that over here, just there. And it should automatically connect with a road. There you go, excellent. Did destroy a few houses in the process, but it's fine. Now this side's a pretty easy one. You just gotta turn around and it should maybe just go straight in. It doesn't go straight in, but that's fine because it's not a hard job. So just go to there and then connect with that. There we go, nice. So all of you guys should be automatically on here. Pretty much are, excellent. So these are all long distance buses. Uh, so kind of don't need to deal with these guys too much because they're already working as they should. We don't really have any local buses though. We have these two shuttle buses, but they're not really doing a whole lot. So I think we should scrap the shuttle bus program 
uh, and begin to do some more advanced bosses. It's really easy though, advanced bosses. It's not that much more difficult than it is to just do simple bosses. And they're a lot better. Okay, so disregard the train station. This is the bus stop here, the main terminal. So we're going to want to go to all of these areas throughout the town. And probably going to want several routes that follow main roads. So I'm going to build some bus lines and uh, we'll see what we get. But make sure when you do it in your map, you build two or three, at least just going throughout the city in various directions, just so there's different stops close to different people's houses so they can get off and use the bus easy. And this is what I came up with. There's a lot of stops, okay? But I think it's going to work. There's about four lines running right now. And they basically, they cover one side of the town, drive through, they stop in the middle, then they keep driving around and covering the stops on the other side, and they go various ways. Like, for example, this one right here takes this route, you can see it's sort of a medium ground on both ways, we're going a medium distance, medium distance. Some are more extreme, some more go a short distance on one side, some longer on the other side. Let's take number three for example, I think this one goes a fair distance. So this one for example is only short on this side, but it goes quite far on this side. So let's add some vehicles to these routes now. I'm going to go for three, and then we'll stick three on each, and just see what we have left over. It does turn out we've got some of these buses designed for the city, so I'll probably stick one of these on each of them as well. And uh, yeah, we should see some good improvement there with the population growth. That's a lot of us stuff as well. So the most important takeaway from this is that you shouldn't do lines in a circle that follow around the whole way around the city. Or in smaller circles getting wider and wider like a tree. Don't want to do that. You want to have a line that's drawing to a location, turning around and going back to the same stops along the way. It's so much better. Honestly, passengers will use it so much more. Might as well take a quick look at the train since we've got this extra rolling stock. You only hold 56 and you're Berlin to Hanover. Berlin to Hanover, there's 90 waiting, so we can immediately add some more train cars to this. Let's see what we've got in storage. I know we've got some somewhere. So if I take these two Bavarians off here, and then we can stick these onto this train. So you well, that's looking pretty good now. 84 max, and what we had on the platform, 90, so there's six left over. Looks about balanced to me. I don't know about the other station, but this is working for the capital, so at least we're making money one way. It should be enough. What's this train doing? Berlin to Strasbourg. Right, you've got 108 on board, so that's not full. And how many have we got on platform here? 32, so not too many on this one. It's not as important. Let's see how many people get on board this train. You see, only 33. That's not very many, so we don't need to touch that train. We could even take a car off that train if we wanted to. Looks like we've got another train rolling in from Krakow. You've got five on board and full capacity. And what about the train station? 85 people wanted to get on board so we can probably add another car to this as well so let's go back to our depot there's one there so we'll take that off and we'll stick just the one onto this train and that takes us up to 78 and i think that pretty much covers it there's only eight people left pretty good stuff nice definitely gonna need some more stuff on here i mean there's only 48 times two trains on here so yeah there's a whole 165 waiting to be loaded onto the trains and one train is actually just left not too long ago uh, and that's on full capacity only 48 not very good can we get another one of these trains i wonder so you're holding 48 and you've got the prius 58 on there let's see what we got in storage so we've got a prouse but we don't have any compatible rolling stock but that's fine we can modify these two vehicles we can get rid of those passenger cars off that train. I just put them to the front so I know what's happening. Just so I can see them a bit more easy. And now with this train, I guess we can buy some more vehicles. So the Prius 58 goes a top speed of 50. Not fantastic. Uh, and how fast do these go? Let's have a look. So we've got some box cars. You go 50 and I'm guessing these are faster. We don't need those then. So if we go for the 50 miles an hour ones, and we can also just grab what's on here already really. So 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We'll buy that and we'll chuck that on to the Krakow Goods to Berlin, which is eventually going to be called Goods to Distribution. So I'll add some more carriages to the Vienna train, not because they need it in Berlin. There's actually no one waiting for a Vienna train in Berlin, but Vienna is a very different story. Look at this over here. All these people want to go to Berlin. So I've just added those extra cars just to be like a, a medium between the two. I don't know why there's so many people waiting over here, but no one waiting in Berlin to go the other way. Weird. We can see that our bus stops are already picking up. We've got plenty of people waiting. Excellent. In fact, I can't see a stop apart from the ones on the extremities who don't actually have people waiting. There's lots of people, especially over here in the center. Lots of people over here. Can we get a little house to store people, I wonder? Is that going to be uh, enough room anywhere? Probably not, if I, had to, if I had to guess. Oh, there we go. We can fit one there. Can we fit one? No, we can't. Well, that's as good as it's going to get, folks. You get a little hut like that. And how many does that hold? A good 20. It's better than nothing, eh? Nice. What are you? Your Hanover. What's Hanover looking like? It's, uh, it's a full train with 25 left over, that's right. And then over in Hanover, what are we looking like? We got, whoa, 300 people in Hanover. 
So same story, we'll pull all those carriages out of storage, we'll get them going. This train has 84 and it's a max speed of 50, so we probably just need some of those cheap ass train cars. Looks like we've got some in here, we've got two of these, and you know what? We'll give him a Russo as well, sure. This train has suddenly become very posh. The rear car is very fancy compared to the rest of the train. Perhaps that's like a premier club for the extra ticket payers, the first class almost. Let's compare the two. So this is what it's like in third class, and then I guess this is first class? Um, I guess you get your own compartments. It's better than the other place, but it's not much better. <laughs> Anyway, that's on board now, plenty more capacity. And that's pretty much done in terms of rolling stock. We haven't got a whole lot left over. All of this is cargo, and this side we only have the fast stuff. We've only got two Russos, and that's looking like it for the train cars. So I wonder if there's a train somewhere that might need them. This is the Berlin to Strasbourg train. You've got a full capacity, and how are you looking? There's 25 people. What about in Strasbourg? How many people are waiting over here? This could even be upgraded to a PLM actually, because it's quite long distance. 216, that's an absolute upgrade, and we're doing that right now. One Russo on board and two Varvarians and a Prius. I reckon we can change that. So we've got a PLM here with two Russos. What if we take the one Russo off this train? So we'll put this Prouse, is it Prouse, Prius? I don't know, let me know in the comments. We'll put this Prouse down in the depot. So this consist is just literally this Russo bolt that's left over. And we'll add the PLM instead of the Prouse. It's better, but it's not great. So when this guy gets back to Berlin, I'm going to add a couple of extra cars of these Russo bolts. Probably get it up to a much better capacity. Maybe just the one car, actually. That's done, but as it turns out, there's actually another train on this track. Let's see what we have in storage once again. Uh, it's not it's not great. We don't have the same thing. What do you do? So, Steam. Currently, the PLM is the other train. You go 60, and then the one above goes 90, which is a bit faster. It would be a slight waste to use this with the same train cars, but I think we're going to have to because that's what we've got. We could buy another train, but what's the point? We already have three trains sitting in storage. We don't need another one in storage. So what we'll do is we'll grab that. Uh, we're probably going to need to grab this train and some passenger cars. Probably going to have to be the Russo Bolt, so they go 60, unless we can go any faster than that. We could go with that one that goes 80, so that would be a little bit better. I think I might do that, so we'll grab a couple of those. And that's now going to replace this train that's just pulling in to Berlin. How convenient is that? We can see the replacement happening right now. This guy's going to turn around and head back to the depot. And the new guy comes to replace him. Pretty, pretty looking train. We've got the luxury cars on board. That should solve a lot of our issues. Look at the money we're raking in. 5.6 million currently. Excellent. Now, who's waiting? Berlin to Budapest. What's happening here? Where are you, train? You know, nowhere near is where. Uh, perhaps two trains would do the job here. So, currently we've got a, a pretty fast train. Uh, there's a lot of people waiting. 300 people. So I think perhaps if we add another one of these trains, or maybe even two, a lot of people want to go to Budapest, interesting. So probably another one of these trains. Now what have these guys got on board? It's the S1 plus two of the other guys, I forget the name of the carriage, but I think we can go cheaper than that. I think I used those because we had them available, but I don't think we have any more that go with the correct speed available. So we would have to buy two more anyway. We've got an S1 available though. So we'll grab the S1, or we'll dump all these cargo things onto the other train because we don't need that. And we'll add some train cars. I think the exact same one we just used could be good. Or perhaps one that goes 90. Uh, but I don't think we actually have many things that go 90. So uh, it looks like it's going to have to be the 80. Which is not quite as good. But it's good enough for me. A couple of those guys. And we'll stick those on. And that's going to go on to Berlin to Budapest. Just give it a little bit of relief. I mean, this poor guy is uh, having to load all these people onto one train. is uh, obviously not too good. <laughs> this guy is struggling a little bit. Perhaps going to upgrade this train or add another one. So I'm going 50, which is not too fast. So I might add another one of these trains or upgrade this train. Probably both. Because this is full stack, 160, but it's still got loads of stuff left over. Like, you could fill pretty much two more trains there. So I think probably grab another one of these trains or upgrade the engine would be best. Uh, so I think I'm going to send this to depot once it's dropped off and we'll do that. And let's see what else we have in storage we can use. We might as well use everything up at this point. It's better than it's sitting around. Just the Prouse in this engine shed. What about over here? Although we do have a Prouse, we actually have a lot of these flatbeds. Uh, we have six of those and we do have some more coal trucks as well. So with that said, I think we can make a form of a train up because we've got 32 and we've got 15 in this shed at least of the, uh, the type we need. So what have we actually got on the other train over here? So on here we've got 80 storage of each. Okay, that's fine. Let's do the same thing over here. Get it down to about 80. That's good. And we'll send all these guys up top. Nice one. Now we just need five more flatbeds with stakes. We've got six in here. Excellent. So we get rid of one, two, three, four, five. And that can go on to the other train. As it turns out, they were actually the nicer kind. So one, two, three, four, five. That uh, gives us 180, which is better. Uh, and that can go on there. 
Perhaps we could drop some of these guys off instead, because I don't need 180, I need 160. What if we drop some of these off a little bit, get it down to 160 again? At least five left over, we'll just combine these two trains. And I'll move this train over to the other shed as well, makes a lot of sense to put them all in the same one. Excellent, so this train can now go onto that route, and that should hopefully do a lot more stuff for us. And on that train goes, it's a little bit slower than its sister train, but it should do a little bit more on the delivery side, because then at least it's doing a fair amount of delivery, even though, like I say, it might slow some other trains down. We're getting that extra growth from the resources being brought in, so it shouldn't matter too much. And we're going to upgrade later anyway. Tell you what, guys, we've been building an absolute society here. This is crazy. Love it. So much going on. It's the beauty of Transport Fever 2. There's just so much happening, and it's great, you know? I'll tell you what, our earnings are looking very healthy. 11.6 million profits. And that's just what we need because we are currently at war. We can't forget that. We've built some population now. And that's why I come to you guys because I want you to cast your vote. So go to the community section on my channel and you can either vote for finishing off all of the industries in Berlin. So everything is growing the maximum it can and get the biggest city possible. But by sending troops up north, we could attack Nantes or Lyon. And we can then destroy or at least minimize the threat of these guys retaliating because we're currently occupying their main city. And that should pretty much stamp out the rest of the north of the map, at least on the mainland. There's only three cities here. Or I decided to include a third option because usually what happens is there's a landslide one way to the other. And I think adding a third option should quell that a little bit. The third option is to attack south to Belgrade because by taking over Belgrade, we have much better defenses. Let me show you. So this mountain rage protects Cluj from attack. It's actually much less likely they're going to attack because of this mountain that's blocking their path. Now the same can be said for Belgrade. If we own Belgrade, they no longer have a through route through these mountain ranges. You can see there's a little mountain range that covers this whole area and Belgrade is kind of the middle point between two mountains. So owning that would definitely increase our defensive ability, especially for Budapest who is quite vulnerable. I'll tell you what, I'll throw you in a bonus option. Trieste was under attack and I kind of disregarded them. But come to think of it, They've got a weapons factory. Might come in handy. So let me know what you guys want to do in that vote. Ask the community section on my channel. And click this link on screen to see the next video in the series.